Hey everyone, I'm Scott Stokely and I'm at Another Round Disc Golf in Salt Lake City. And I am here with somebody, I'm not gonna say your name yet because I don't wanna spoil it. But I'm here with somebody who's actually super famous historically in disc golf and yet none of you know who it is. How about that for a teaser? <laughs> now they have to click until the first ad. Break, they have to. And I get paid. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to start by telling a story that was in my book, Scott Stokely Growing Up Disc Golf, which covers the first 25 years history of disc golf. And I'm going to tell the part of the story, which is a good story, that was in my book. But after I published my book, you reached out to me because you have far more of the story that wasn't in my book. Uh, this is a really good one. So uh, back in the early days, back in the early 80s, uh, frisbee golf was starting to become a thing, but it was still very small. And all golf discs were existing frisbees or frisbees or flying discs for other sports that they maybe made heavier. And a person by the name of Jan Sobel came along and he invented what I believe was the first flying disc made specifically for disc golf. Now, this is a little bit of a gray area here because there were a couple other companies, Brand X and AMF Void, that made discs for disc golf, but they were also bigger and they could also be catch frisbees and used for other things. So I, I guess this is subjective, but I think the puppy was the first one that was made only. It was 21 centimeters. It wasn't a catch disc. You couldn't play guts with it. It was for, for, it was for disc golf. Now, Jan made this disc uh, under his company called Destiny Discs. And Destiny Discs uh, was named after his daughter, Destiny. What was your name again? <laughs> Destiny. All right. So this is Jan Sobel's daughter. Now, the story I told in the book that's good, but it's going to become great when you add your part to it, was I, I talked about how the sport was so small back then and Jan was so dedicated to the sport uh, he actually invented a bunch of other discs, the bullet, the laser, the long range, the dimple, super puppy. Oh, did I say he made the super puppy first? He made the puppy first, later the super puppy. But uh, he was so struggling as a new manufacturer at this small sport, but loved it so much that he used to make discs or at least hot stamp discs in the morning. And he would come out to Oak Grove Park or Silmar or Morley Field or La Mirada, literally lay out a blanket at hole one and sell discs that he had hot stamped that morning. Destiny got wind of the book uh, or the story that was in the book. And you told me a little more about the story. Can you take it from here? Uh, yeah. So. My dad would literally, he was just so obsessed with Frisbee and he loved the golf disc. He, you know, created these and he, just to make ends meet, he would say, okay, we got to, we got to package these tonight. Uh, you know, let's, let's put the packaging on, let's stamp it, let's put it through the heat machine, everything. And the next day, or even that same day, if we got up early, he'd go out there, uh, sometimes out of the back of the, the back of the van or just the blanket. And he would We'd go out there just doing our thing so that he can just make ends meet sometimes just to, you know, get the, get money for groceries and that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just love that story because it, I mean, it, it's one thing to say, well, I'm trying to make it like he's, he's trying to keep his head above water, but the idea that there's like a literally a little girl at home and he's going to go sell Frisbee's discs at the golf course just to buy groceries to take home to cook dinner. That's just like, look, if, if that doesn't make this thing go like a little faster, then you're dead inside. Can I say that? Yes, I, yeah. yes. I've, I've, I've learned for Disney, it's great marketing to attack your audience. Uh, but no, that's, that is the story. So I want to know more about, about this. So he, what did he do at home when he was making these discs? Like in the garage, I mean, because he had them molded elsewhere. Yes, I yes. Okay, ben, so yeah. The, ben Wall molded them? Yes, so they were molded elsewhere. He'd bring home big brown box of, I think it was 42 or 48 Frisbees, whatever it was. And we would get the blank Frisbees out. I was never allowed to do the hot stamping because it was too dangerous as just a kid. But either my mom or my dad would do the actual stamping. And then we'd have folders. We'd put them in. I don't know if you remember those, but they were the folders here. You slide them in. Uh, we put the plastic 
put it through the shrink wrap machine, and then we the kids were able to catch them or do the the actual folders. So we had those those jobs. But yeah, the whole neighborhood knew us as the Frisbee family. A lot of the kids would come over, ask my dad, "Hey, can we make some money? Uh, can we do the packaging, or can we can we catch them as they come out to put them in the box?" Wow. And then like for Halloween, they'd come to our house. My dad instead of giving out candy, he would give out frisbees. So anytime there was a reject, like a hot stamp that was no good, he would just put it in the reject box, is what we called it. And then every Halloween, everybody come to our house and get a frisbee. That's crazy. And by the way, when we talk about frisbee, I used to term frisbee and frisbee golf also. Back then, frisbee was synonymous with disc because frisbee was the uh, trademark name from Whammo for their brand of flying discs. But it was like aspirin, Kleenex. It became so commonplace that like all discs were called frisbees. I mean, I'd wondered, I mean, why did you, Destiny Discs, why did it become dynamic discs? So I had two siblings, uh, one older, one younger. And my mom actually told me, I said, why, why did the name change? Why, why, is it, why didn't it stay Destiny Disc? That's so awesome. She said, well, it wasn't fair to your siblings. So they had to change it. And no relation to the current dynamic discs. And you were actually asking me if, like, how that came about. And I can't speak for dynamic discs other than to say they're great guys. There would be nothing. There was no intent there. I think that the dance company had kind of gone under at this point and wasn't doing anything when dynamic discs picked up the name. Um, but yeah, it's just wild. Now he invented the puppy first and you are aware of the story of how that became the super puppy. Not exactly. So, did I fill you in a little bit? Can on I that? Tell me, tell us everybody. <laughs> tell everybody. Okay. So this is hearsay. So, uh, wait, you can't, let me think. Can you sue me over here, say, if the person isn't alive? Any... Okay, I'm going to tell it anyways. Um, this is a story I heard, but I, I had this, this story confirmed by Tom Monroe in a conversation a couple of years ago. So I have it on pretty good authority. Um, so Jan was partially funded by Ed Hedrick. And Ed uh, had a little bit of money invested into this project. Ben Wall was the company molding him. Ed invested. And I guess Jan got behind on his payments to Ed. And Ed came and said, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a, uh, what's, what's the word for it? Um, I'm taking your mold. <laughs> and he took the mold, repossessed. I, he repossessed the puppy mold. And apparently he put it on the back of his truck and it fell out of the truck. Oh, yes. I've heard this story. Okay, yes. And it broke. And then... Jan came back and told, uh, reinvented the puppy, but he called it the super puppy. Now, at the time, we, like, no one, like, I don't think hardly anybody knew why there was a puppy, and then all of a sudden there's a super puppy. They weren't identical. I guess from what I've, I've I know of your dad, he probably didn't write down the specs of the puppy, maybe. I'm not <laughs> sure, if, yeah. <laughs> but when he remade the super puppy, it was similar, but it definitely was not the same. It wasn't like the same CAD drawing taken to a molding. But that's how the puppy came about, and the... Uh, the super puppy came about after the puppy wound up on the I-10 freeway. That's the story you heard. I've heard a similar story, yes. Okay. <laughs> Might have been the 101. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it was the 101 freeway. Now, uh, so Jan was uh, an avid freestyler. He was an avid frisbee player. Everybody was a frisbee player back then. Uh, he used to run events all over. And he ran one uh, every year in Santa Monica called the Beach Bowl. Yes. Super and fun. Super fun. Now, here's the cool story but for me about the Beach Bowl. That was my first Frisbee tournament ever. So my, my Frisbee golf, Frisbee, flying disc, disc golf career started at your dad's tournament. That's so cool. It is. And, and he actually put a, um, uh, it was 18 holes of disc golf at Will Rogers Park. Do you remember? Yep. And uh, State Park. There's a city park I went to. I'm like, that's not the same place. It's the state park up on the hill. And then you went to the beach to complete the tournament uh, where you played maximum time aloft and distance and Wisbo. And uh, the, the Frisbee golf course, uh, I, I don't know how much does he remember, but the Frisbee golf course, I mean, no baskets. Like, I don't think the single person in the sport other than Ed Hedrick had 18 extra baskets mm -hmm. lying around and they weren't made for temporary baskets. Back then, if you wanted to have a basket in your backyard, you either poured concrete 
or you filled a tire full of concrete and put a sleeve in because there were no baskets sold as temporary baskets, portable baskets, I should say. So the, the, the beach bowl course was tape wrapped around trees, <laughs> tape wrapped around poles. I'll never forget the best hole on the course. This is one, this is my first tournament. You had to land your disc on a picnic table. That was the hole. And the coolest thing about it, it was actually the best basket on the course because every other basket that used tape around the poles, it, it, whether you hit above or below the tape could be decided by whether your friends were on your card mm -hmm. or people from another rival course. The, the picnic basket, you either landed on it or you didn't. It was kind of like what the first pole hole was. It was definitive, in or out. But then afterwards, we went down to the beach bowl. And uh, I don't know if I told you this. It's, well, it's in the book. But there was one junior because... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love this. Adults, <laughs> adults didn't let their kids play with Frisbee players back then. Not a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Not many kids. <laughs> it, was little, it was a little counterculture. There weren't a lot of children playing back then. And, and uh, so I was the only junior at the beach bowl. And so I played as a 12-year-old kid. And at the award ceremony, your dad says... And winning first place in the juniors division, Scott Stokely, hands me a bag of Destiny Disc. I love that. Isn't that wild? <laughs> so cool. I'm gonna try not to cry, but it's like that's where it all started for me. I had a bag full of of discs that your dad made that you may have stamped. That's so cool. Not well, not stamped, but I could have packaged them. You could have packaged my. You might have packaged my first trophy. So your dad was uh, started in '82. 81, 82? Uh, 80 or 81, so maybe 81 then. Okay, 81. And... The... Well, technically sooner, or earlier, I think, but the actual puppy, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I think 81. Well, I'd have to go back. <laughs> we made the floater, what's it called, the beach floater? The floater, yeah. That was that was the beach disc, the big beach disc. Yeah, you made that before the puppy? Oh, gosh. I uh, don't remember. Okay. Well, I know that they came out afterwards. So he started making when the beveled edge disc came out. He got on and he started making beveled edge discs too that you've never seen. Like none of you, except for like maybe by none, I mean eight. Eight of you have seen the bullet and the laser. Uh, they were beveled edge discs that were, they, they weren't bad. They were just 20 point. Seven they were just illegal. Centimeters, centimeters. <laughs> when the rule was introduced that discs must be a minimum of 21 centimeters, the puppy was big enough and the super puppy, but the bullet, laser, long ranger, and dimple oh, yeah. were not. So uh, unfortunately for Jan, uh, and I don't know any of the story behind this, there's different ideas, but unfortunately for your dad, when that, that rule came about, his fledgling not making enough money to like pay for groceries company all of a sudden all of his discs but one were now not even legal in tournaments and that was pretty much the end of it right that was pretty much the end of it yeah because then he just had that one disc yeah so that's when he decided to be a p teacher on the side so then he was trying to do the discs and the p teaching and he did that so that he can incorporate frisbee into every single thing yeah. Well, so speaking of that, there is a book on Frisbee that is, it's interesting because basically it's his recollection, recollections of the early days of the sport and all the different Frisbee games that, he, that well, some of which I think he might have even invented. Yes, a lot of different games. Yes, are in this book. And you, you graciously, instead of trying to like, you know, capitalize on it, you wanted your dad's work to be out there. Is that right? Yes. So it's, it's been shared. But yeah, it's there. I mean, he was working on it. He, he never actually completely finished it, but most of the info is there. <laughs> he was an innovator. So one of the discs that I have not met, well, I mentioned in passing, but I didn't talk about it a minute ago, was a disc called the Dimple. It's a golf disc that looks like the surface of a golf, golf ball. ball. Yeah. And I don't know if that helped or hurt the flight. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know either. I, I remember playing with it a few times and I didn't... You can't play I, catch it with solid. It, yeah, it, it was like I, a solid rock, but it, yeah, it was fun it was to just hold and throw, so... No, but what was cool about that is like, okay, like it might not have turned out to fly well or be successful. Had it flown farther or better, 
That could have been the new design. It changes the game, okay. right? So we only know in hindsight that it didn't. But um, yeah, I mean, your dad was a, such an important part of the sport. And I think it's, God, it's almost like, you know, with, with anything like this, we, are, we were so new that in a sense, people were sacrificed at the altar of making this thing grow. All the volunteers that, that dedicated all those hours with no reward that get burnt, <laughs> that got burned out and left the sport. And all the innovators who were the, the pioneers. And your, unfortunately, your dad was just a few years too early. But uh, he, he matters to us. Thank you. So anyways, so I, I hope you all like this story. I'm not trying to get too sappy. Uh, insert here, uh, edit in a, a, some sarcastic joke. So it ends all silly, but no, I think it's, no, it, it's, it's important. So thank you so much for getting together. I can, I'm so happy to have met you and um, get to share your dad's story. Well, thank you so much for having me. And when I told my, some of my friends like Ben, I don't know if you knew, I, know him but he's like oh you're meeting the legend today so that's kind of cool oh yeah legend. the legend to be talking about my dad that's pretty awesome she just means old <laughs> but so yeah thank you our, our history matters so i hope you all enjoyed this you guys I, I feel now i actually feel bad i think i did way too much talking i didn't let you do enough I, no i'm terrible at this part so this is great oh good oh then in that case so i, I did it on purpose I, I just got so excited like talking about your dad and um, yeah, well, guess what? I hope you all enjoyed. Um, thanks. <laughs>